So I need to make this keyway here while leaving the top intact. You can see the bottom is split. So that was the reason for the newspaper, so that I could split it apart. So I've got these two pieces, and then now I need a key. I'm going to mark the edges of these holes. So now I've got the center of each pin marked and extended down here. What I need to do is make the cuts in the key, these little grooves. That determines how much each pin needs to be pushed up to get it to the proper position so the lock will open. The center of that cut lines up with the center of this pin. The end of the pin is rounded to fit down into that cut. So then when I drop it in, that is the length that this pin needs to be, right there. So these are the pins in the right order. Now, those are the key pins. These are the driver pins. These live up here. So these are going to be like this on top of those pins. So you can see that it wouldn't turn now because the driver pins are all going to be locking it up. When you put the key in, it brings all of those pins to exactly 
the right height. Now, if it was the wrong key, you know, maybe one would be that high, and this one would be that high. It wouldn't work. It's got to be exactly the right key so that when it's all the way in, it puts all those pins in the right place. And I'm going to drop the driver pins in. So it will not turn. The driver pins have dropped below the shear line and they are blocking the way in there. I put the key in. It pushes all those pins up and then I can turn it.
So. The way this works, this guy goes right there, and then these are on top of it. And when that turns, these are driven out into those notches to hold the shackle in place. And when you turn it the other way, it allows that shackle to come up. So that now engages this flat area here. Now it rotates and then hits. And that's where you want it locked. Because when I turn the key, I'm gonna be turning it like this, which will rotate these, which is gonna cause a locking paw to move back here and to move back here and disengage the shackle. The next one is this, which has this little spring in it. It's basically just a piece of spring steel that's coiled into a loop. And that is what makes the lock automatically close. If I twist it, you can see that pawl is, and then I let go, it pushes itself back out.
Thanks, oh. Dan. <laughs> well, that was a total waste of time. Yeah, 96 pounds. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I wanted to announce that I am opening up an Etsy store, and I'm going to be selling a lot of the things that I make on this channel, including this lock uh, on the store. I will put the link in the description, and I will try to keep it stocked as I uh, go through projects. A lot of people are asking how many hours I have in this lock. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I know it's a lot. I've worked on it in different sections and at different times uh, over many months, and, uh, and I, I really just don't know how many hours I have in it. I know it's a heck of a lot more than I thought it was going to take, and if somebody asked me to make another one right now, uh, the answer would be no. <laughs> But uh, maybe in the future I could, uh, I could take that on again. Now that I know how long it would take me, I'd have to do some mental preparation to get ready for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Yeah.